Good morning, welcome to my laboratory. Uh, there is the PCB Jewel Thief test board with input from a DC power supply instead of a battery. This DC power supply right there is providing us with the input power to run the Jewel Thief at stable voltages. Also hooked up to the input power is the DC voltmeter on the 2000 millivolt range. So we're seeing 1.42728 volts in to the Jewel Thief now. And we're looking at the input current with an oscilloscope probe and a probe from the Philips frequency counter. And there's the oscilloscope trace right there. We're looking only at uh, channel 2, and that's where the baseline is, right there, where that little mark is, right there. Okay, so there's the current that's being read by that probe, and this is at 50 millivolts per division, which would equate to 50 milliohms per division. Yeah, we're using the 10x attenuated probe there. Can you see the attenuation? That's 10, 10. So that's 50 millivolts per division, which would translate to 50 milliohms per division. And the time base that we're using right now is one tenth of a millisecond or a hundred microseconds per division. Okay. And the frequency counter right now is telling us that we're reading about 24.7 kilohertz for the frequency of oscillation. Okay. But the important thing that I want to pay attention to on this video, the reason for the demonstration is to see how the offset voltage varies with the input voltage. So here's the baseline. So we're a little bit over one full division below the baseline. So that's going to be, um, what are we at? We're at 50 millivolts per division. So that's going to be about 60 millivolts below the baseline. Or, uh, so that's a, that represents a constant level of current with a ripple sitting on top of it. Since that's negative, the, uh, because of the probe orientation in the circuit, that means that's conventional current flowing out of the battery being dissipated in the circuit, power being dissipated in the circuit as a result of it. Uh, it would be only when the uh, trace crosses the zero baseline that you would consider it to be uh, being returned to the battery. Okay, so now I'm going to vary the voltage output from the little power supply here and we'll look at the at the uh, voltage display on the meter here. So I'm going to go down uh, it's a very very delicate adjustment so let's stop at about 13.4 volts or so right there and uh, check the scope display and you can see that this trace is it's lowered in frequency and it's moved up closer to the baseline. Let's just check to make sure the baseline hasn't moved. Okay, and uh, now our frequency is down to about 16 kilohertz, 15.9 or 15.8, so kilohertz or so. Okay, the voltage output of my little, this ancient thing is uh, not all that stable in the, uh, in the millivolt. Uh, position. So now let's lower the voltage a little bit more to about 12.8 volts. Well, it's still nice and bright. You can see that the trace has moved up further. It's even closer to the baseline now, an even lower frequency. So now we're looking at uh, a little bit of... Uh, it's sh we've shifted to the Hertz range now. So we we're at 11.4 kilohertz. Okay, let's lower the voltage even more. 
I can hear it now. I can hear the oscillations. Okay, at 10.1 or 1.1 volt input. Now we can see that the, the trace is almost, almost right up to the baseline. Right? And the frequency is really a lot lower now. We're under 5 kilohertz now, 4.7 kilohertz. Okay, so lowering even more. About 7.7, .7, or rather, uh, 0 0.77 volts, 770 millivolts in. And there's the scope trace. Now the, now the trace is actually touching the baseline, as far as I can tell. It's just like one, one line width underneath the baseline there. And the frequency has dropped to a little bit over 2 kilohertz now, 2.2 kilohertz. And the light is starting to dim a little bit. Okay, let's go down a little bit more. And that is one dirty pot on that thing. All right, let's go to about 0.57, just a little bit over half a volt input. So we've got a fair amount of light, but we no longer have enough signal to trigger the oscilloscope at uh, at its most sensitive range there. So that's where we'll stop the experiment. Uh, so we have the input voltage varying and we've shown a frequency dependence and also a dependence on the offset voltage the distance below the baseline or the constant current that's flowing with a little bit of ripple on it that depends on the input voltage Now I've not been able to get the trace to cross over the baseline, so I suspect that there may be, uh, I, I actually reported that I was able to do it at one point, but that may have been an inadvertent uh, mistake on my part. I may have actually had the input coupled to AC, which as you can see gives a trace that crosses over the baseline and looks very much like uh, what Lawrence is experiencing on his traces. Okay, so I may, when I, when I initially reported that I had a trace that crossed the baseline, I may have actually inadvertently had AC coupling selected. It's easy to do on this scope, and there's no display on the screen that tells you that you've done that. But when, when I assure that I have DC coupling selected and no inline capacitors or anything like that, then uh, I'm, I'm unable to get my system to cross the zero uh, the zero current baseline and produce any indication of quote unquote positive uh, current which would indicate current flowing back into the battery all right uh, so we're still experiencing a little bit of a mystery here as to why the numbered boards uh, from Lawrence uh, show this behavior on his oscilloscope we would really like to see that behavior uh, exhibited on some other oscilloscope by some other researcher using some other brand of scope, especially than the ATEN brand scopes. All right, thank you very much for watching.